Thank you for joining us on Good Living. We're wrapped now to be able to have a chat with uh, international author Elizabeth Kostova, who is uh, on a whirlwind tour of New Zealand, really, and great to see that you've made it down to Christchurch, Elizabeth. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. First time in New Zealand for you. Exciting. It is. It's, it's just been wonderful. It's such a beautiful country. Mm. I'm getting only a little glimpse of it, but now I can see I have to come back for much longer. I know, exactly. <laughs> it's always the way, isn't it? <laughs> yes. But it's been, it's been a busy tour for you as well. Nine weeks in total. Yes, so nine weeks so far. <laughs> oh, and still more to come. So obviously you, you spend a lot of the time promoting your books um, in your home country uh, and then you head to other places around the world as well. How do you kind of decide where to go? Is that the, the publisher's decision? Well, that has a lot to do with, with publishers and, and also with the publishers who pick up a book overseas. Mm. So with my first novel, The Historian, I, th I think I went to nine countries and that novel was widely translated and this one is starting to be translated in a lot of places as well so I have a feeling I will be going some yeah. other, <laughs> to some <laughs> other countries. <laughs> but this has, been, this has been really a lovely trip here. Oh, I'm so good. grateful to get to see a little of New Zealand. Oh, we, we just, I think it's so wonderful that international authors do stop by because it, it's great for us to be able to have a chat with you. You know, We buy your books and we see them in the stores and having you here is fantastic for us. The Historian, can we quickly talk about that? Yes, because of course. course that was a hugely popular book. You know, went to number one on the New York bestselling list, didn't it? It did, yes. That was that was a, a huge surprise for me, I have to say. I, was, I really had written it in a slow and mostly rather private way over 10 years and around the wow. edges of a lot of other things in my life. And it was, I was really stunned that it did that. Mm, it's fantastic. You must have been absolutely thrilled. Well, I was, yes, thrilled and shocked. <laughs> <laughs> the, kind of, the basis of that book is Dracula, isn't it, really? Um, and I know that you spent a bit of time living in Eastern Europe as well, didn't you? Yes, I, I do know Eastern Europe pretty well from lots of, of trips and, and living there sometimes. And I wanted very much to write a book that would be both about Dracula's, the legend of Dracula mm -hmm. and the historical Dracula and East European history. So it's really also kind of a travel book, I think. Yeah, it is. <laughs> exactly right. You can <laughs> pick through all these amazing things and think, well, we've got to get there. What do you think, given that book, what do you think now about the, the Twilight phenomenon and those series of books? Well, I think in, in a lot of ways they're very different. Mm. You know, they, they are um, much more a kind of young adult phenomenon and, um, and much more sort of, uh, you know, I think they're more fantasy. Mm. And the, the historian which came quite a bit before, actually, is is very much more grounded in real history. So, um, but I think, you know, I think these, in, the interest in vampire lore kind of comes and goes. It's, the first wave of it was in about, it was in the mid 18th century. So, you know, probably again in 2030, mm. there'll be a wave of vampire literature and everyone Again. will say, oh, I remember this happened a couple of generations ago. Yeah, that's right. We're just enjoying it at the moment. Now, The Swan Thieves uh, is an incredible story on love and obsession <laughs> and, and kind of how that all works. What was, what was the main kind of idea that you got to write The Swan Thieves? What was it that kind of started that for you? You know, I've always loved paintings and art history. I'm not a painter myself. I wish I could say that I, I am a painter. <laughs> but I love, I just love looking at paintings. And I'd wanted for a long time to write a novel about painters and painting. And those subjects led kind of naturally into the obsession that, that painters can feel sometimes for their work. Mm -hmm. And all artists, I think. And I, I found myself really drawn to the French Impressionists, who are kind of a, a classic subject. You know, we've seen so much of their work. But I wanted to try to do something fresh and human with that part of our history, which we've been so exposed to. And I was very excited um, developing this story, because it takes place both in the late 20th century in the United States, uh, with some characters there, and in the 1870s and 1880s mm. in Paris and Normandy and some settings I found very beautiful. And it's, it's briefly, it's the story of a psychiatrist in Washington, D.C. in 1999 who is also an avid amateur painter. Mm -hmm. And one day he gets the case of his career, this, this genius painter, Robert Oliver, 
and Robert Oliver refuses to speak in treatment. So his psychiatrist begins to interview the women close to him who have been close to, to Robert Oliver and also to wonder why Robert Oliver paints the same beautiful face over and over. Right. And it, this leads him into a story that's a mystery from the 19th century as well, so and into the historical setting in the book. And both parts of the book do contain rather unusual love stories. And it was it really was a joy to write. It was a book that unfolded little by little for me, and not one I sort of expected to write. It's been it's been a huge pleasure. So, with the historian, you're saying that it, that it was a ten year process. Was it uh, a long period of time for the Swan Thieves as well? Well, it was a mere four years. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody asked me the other day, why did it take so long? And I said, oh, it seemed very fast to me mm. after ten years. <laughs> but I had more time to write this time, more time to immerse myself. I do a lot of research in my work as you know yes. so that and and I really like to have as much knowledge of history as I can and as much accuracy about the real settings and historical events um, and those things take a lot of time mm, of they course do, yeah but it really does I mean it, it makes the book feel so much more realistic and come alive the fact that the research is done so impeccably with history and that you know that you can you know it's a really good true account it's brilliant who's your favorite um, painter Oh, it would be very, very hard for me to choose, but um, I, I have to say that I came to love all over again, to love the, the original French Impressionists mm -hmm. and to look at their paintings in museums was just, I think this book was just a kind of excuse to go to great museums. I, know, I was just going to say, did you spend a lot of time in museums <laughs> and galleries? Yeah, but, but painters like Monet, of course, but also uh, Alfred Sisley, who mm -hmm. was a wonderful, wonderful painter of landscape, and Berthe Morisot, who was a great French female painter, woman painter, part of the original group of Impressionists. She painted a lot of lovely, intimate scenes from family life and people she knew, but also landscapes. So uh, it was. It would be very hard for me to choose. I <laughs> <laughs> know, that was a tough question. <laughs> well, Elizabeth, thank you so much for coming and talking about the Swan Thieves. Of course, it's uh, available now in all good bookstores. And congratulations as well on the, the film rights to the historian. I think thank that's, you very that's much. something very exciting to look forward to I'm in the next year or so. Yes. Thank you very thank much, you. Elizabeth. And do stay tuned because we will give away the Swan Thieves and the coffee catch-up, which is on the way next with Donna Manning.